All right, guys, it's been a few days since I uh, started this video, and when I left off, I told you we were almost time for the birds to have them hatch out. Well, that day has come. They've been in the incubator here now for about 24 hours. They started hatching last night sometime. Now, we're in North Carolina, and right now it's kind of cold out, so I've brought the brooder, the holding tank, up to temperature. It's up to about 95, 96 degrees in there. And what I'm going to do now is show you the next step, what I do and how I transport them from here to here. Now, these birds are very fragile right now, especially if you live in a colder climate. So you don't want them to be exposed to the cold very long at all. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take them out of here, and then I'm going to move them to the, the brooder tank, what I call the brooder tank, and get them situated in there. That, that, that's that, that uh, holding tank that we um, prepared back here a few days ago. All right, let's go ahead and get them out. I'm going to do this real quick. And when I do this, I'm going to shut this door right behind me so I don't let out a whole lot of heat. Okay? And you can take a look in there real quick, and you can see them all in there. These are the Tibetan quail. All right? Now, what I'm going to do, because like I said, they're so fragile, and you can see how they've dried off. I want to move this piece of glass back. Now that I've moved that glass back, I'm going to take this whole container and I'm going to set it in here. Because this container itself is at about a 95 degree temperature. Now all I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab the little birds, the little quail, and I'm just going to go ahead and empty this thing as fast as I can get it empty. There is probably about 150 quail here. And I've got the tank here. The temperature's up in here, so they're not going to be in between very often. They're going to go right from one warm environment right to another one. They've got food in here, and they're going to get along just fine. And then after I leave them in here, we'll come back in a few hours, and we will see how they're doing. I've got some conternix quail in there, too, but you can see... Let me get these birds in here, and I'm going to show you the difference right off. I can tell you which ones are, are Conternix quail and which ones are the uh, Tibetan quail. Tibetan quail are the darkest, the darkest ones. Sometimes it might take me a little bit longer to get these birds out than usual because of my big hands. I'm afraid to hurt them, so... I try to cup them and just be as gentle as I possibly can be when I'm taking them out. So not to hurt them. Come on, little guys. Get turned around there and get, get lively. You can see right here, guys, we still have some hatching. Right here. Right there, we got, we still got some birds hatching. So the hatching process is not done yet. And what I will do when this is empty is I will take this this hatching box and I will put it back in the incubator there's one right there coming right out now I'm not going to take him out of here right now though okay because I want him to dry off and I want him to stay good and warm so um, anyways I will put this box because I know I'm going to have some more hatch out back in the incubator for another 24 hours and after that point what birds don't hatch out, probably are not going to hatch out. So, you know, the hatch will be just about over. You'll have some late, some birds that will hatch out late. And they're getting along kind of fine. You can see they're not covying up or anything. They're just kind of running around. This has been a pretty good hatch as far as I'm concerned. It's better than I thought it was going to be. Uh, where we get our eggs from. The temperature is cold there, too, and it's cold here, and I really didn't expect. There's another bird right there. It's just hatched out. I didn't really expect we were going to have a very good hatch, but we did. Okay, now you can see, except for a few, a few birds, we're done. So I'm going to take this right now, real quick. I'm going to put it right back in the incubator. 
another 25 or so birds, maybe even more than that. And while you're doing this, make sure you've got plenty of water for the next 24 hours. And I do, it's right up to there. Close the door and, you know, check your temperature and your humidity. It's um, 91 degrees, so see I didn't lose that much temperature by doing it this way. And it looked like the humidity was, it's the humidity you're going to lose quicker than temperature. It's 40 degree, 40% uh, humidity. Okay, real quickly and then I'm going to close these birds up. I want to show you the difference between a young Caternix quail, which is this one right here in my left hand, and a Tibetan quail. Here's a better example. That Tibetan quail right there was probably a male, but there's a Tibetan quail right here. And that's a Conternix quail. And the eggs are so similar. I want to close this up real quick. Get the temperature back up. The, the eggs are so similar between Tibetan quail and Conternix quail or feral quail that it's really hard to tell if you get them mixed up when you uh, collect your eggs. You just have to hatch them out and see what comes out when they're born. But anyways... That's the process. These guys are getting along really well. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my water uh, container and get some water in there for them. And they've got plenty of food in this hopper that you've seen it put in here the other day. I don't see anybody eating yet, but they will eventually. And I'm going to come back uh, probably about every hour, check these birds out, and see how they're getting along. And I'll come back and I'll show you. And they'll be all spread out and... and the way you see them right now and that's what you want your quail to be doing at night time they'll kind of get gather up a little bit but in um, the daytime or when they're out moving around you want them to be uh, dispersed around the tank moving around that just tells you you get your temperature about right so I will go ahead and end this video and we'll come back in an hour or so and just check them out and see how they're doing all right it's been a few hours everybody and we're back here in the garage and we're going to go ahead now and and head on over and check our quail and see how they're doing. Uh, I like to let them, you know, uh, get acclimated to the uh, the brooder tank, you know, for a few hours. And um, hopefully everything is okay and the temperature's fine. These little guys are getting along really, really good. So let's go ahead over there and check them out and see what's going on. Oh yeah, as you can see, they're doing just fine in there. They're uh, all spread out. Nice and evenly in there, and they're all doing good. Looks like they're really doing really well. They've got, a, got some over there. They're walking along and getting along just fine. There's a couple of them are even eating. So that's what we wanted to see. We wanted to make sure that they're all getting along fine. They're getting along really well. Um, just a few things I'd like to say before we end this video is that, first of all, if you make sure your humidity is right and then secondly make sure your temperature stays correct and thirdly and lastly do not keep opening the door to your um, incubator uh, is any more than you have to if you do them three things you'll probably end up having a successful hatch. So just remember that because the temperature and more importantly, the when it gets closer to the incubation time, I mean to the hatching time, you're gonna to wanna to make really uh, pay a close attention to the humidity. So as long as you do that, I guarantee you, you'll have a good hatch next time you decide to hatch some quail or, or chickens out in your, uh, in your incubator. So I'm Jim. From Quail Hollow Bird Farm, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it'll help you next time you decide to hatch out some eggs. We'll come back on a later video when these birds are getting ready to go out to the flight pen out there. And we'll show you how they fared uh, through the growing up process and show you what they look like when we get them out in the pen. So thanks for watching. Please don't forget to comment and like this video. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel so you'll be sure to get further videos about raising quail and that type of thing. Catch you later, everybody.